This is from an article entitled, A Non-Exhaustive List of Bitfinex and Tether's Misdeeds and Red Flags. You can find the article on my blog at benedeftomlin.com. There were unbacked tethers. Tether advertised no KYC swaps between Bitcoin and Tether. Bitfinex was founded by an active participant in and defender of Ponzi schemes, who after losing much of his Bitcoins in a Ponzi scheme, tried to start his own high-yield lending program. When people were hesitant to hand their funds over to such a passionate Ponzi participant, he quickly moved on and founded Bitfinex. Bitfinex was started by using stolen code written by a teenager with known exploits. Tether was founded by Brock Pierce. Brock Pierce once left the United States with indicted child sexual predator Mark Collins Rector to go to Spain where the two lived together. They were both arrested and significant amounts of child pornography were found in the house. Brock was released without being charged. Tether's first chief compliance officer was Matthew Tremblay, an incredibly difficult person to track down. If reverse image search on his picture returns nothing, he is no longer mentioned on Tether's website, and I cannot find his LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, blog posts, conference speeches, articles, or any other of the modern online detritus our lives generate. I have had at least one person show me a social media account for him, and I do believe he is a real person. The chief financial officer of both Bitfinex and Tether sold pirated software and had to pay Microsoft for it. The general counsel of both Bitfinex and Tether, Stuart Hogner, was the director of compliance for Excapa, Excapsa. Excapsa was the parent company of Ultimate Bet, an online poker site, and during his tenure at Ultimate Bet, they had a god mode that allowed some players to see other players' cards. Stu was the director of compliance for a non-compliant poker site. Bitfinex had to pay a settlement to the CFTC for offering illegal off-exchange transactions. Tether originally promised to always be backed one-to-one -one by cash. They are now 3% backed by cash. Tether commingled client and corporate funds. Bitfinex commingled client and corporate funds. Bitfinex and Tether commingled their commingled funds together. Bitfinex and Tether gave over $1 billion in these commingled funds to alleged money launderers without signing a contract or agreement of any kind. The payment processor who Bitfinex and Tether had given funds to is implicated in embezzlement, bank fraud, wire fraud, counterfeiting, and money laundering for the Colombian cartels, allegedly through Bitfinex. Separately, other money launderers for the cartels were using casinos and tethers to launder their funds, along with trying to use tethers to bribe federal agents. Tether has lied every single day for the last several years on their transparency page about the number of quarantined tethers. Either they have some secret motivation for this, or a $65 billion fund fails to add correctly every single day when they update this. Bitfinex and Tether have used bots and sock puppets to manipulate social media sentiment about their companies. There are extraordinarily suspicious features surrounding the Tether hack and no formal explanation has ever been given. After this hack, Tether used their dominant economic position on the Omni layer to force a hard fork. After this, a feature was added so that Tether would always be able to freeze any Tether in circulation. No post-mortem or security audit was provided after either Bitfinex hack. Tether promised to be regularly audited, but they have never been audited. Tether, at one point, had hired Friedman to complete an audit, but the relationship ended due to the excruciatingly detailed procedures that Friedman was following. Bitfinex promised an audit after the 2016 hack. They have never been audited. After the 2016 hack, Bitfinex claimed to socialize the hack across all accounts. According to reporting by Nathaniel Popper, this was a lie. Coinbase did not receive the haircut when they threatened to sue. Bitfinex promised they would provide an accounting of their methodology to calculate the haircut amount. No such accounting or methodology was provided. 
Tether executives received aperiodic large payments from the Tether reserves. When Bitfinex lost banking with Wells Fargo, they sued in what Phil Potter later described as solely an attempt to buy time. From March 2017 through the middle of September 2017, Tether did not have a bank. The only cash holdings they had were held in trust at the account of Stuart Hogner, their general counsel. This account had $61.5 million in it. During this period, the remainder of Tether's backing was allegedly a receivable from Bitfinex. Bitfinex's bank account during this period received deposits from only two clients and neither purchased Tether's. Nonetheless, the numbers of Tether's in circulation grew from approximately $35 million to $443 million. It was impossible to redeem Tether's with Tether during this period. Tether has provided no explanation for how the above combination of events is possible. The bank Bitfinex and Tether was using it after this point was Noble Bank. This bank was founded by Brock Pierce, the co-founder of Tether, and Eugene Sullivan, who would later write a not attestation for Tether, was on the board. Free, who was also part of the this not attestation, had previously worked with Brock at Sunlot as part of the attempt to purchase Mt. Gox. For their attestation on September 15, 2017, Tether transferred hundreds of millions of dollars from Bitfinex's account mere hours before the attestation occurred. Bitfinex claimed in public that withdrawals were working fine while simultaneously begging Oz Yosef of Crypto Capital Corp. to please allow them to withdraw. The day after releasing a letter from Dell Tech Bank purporting to show that Tether was fully backed, Bitfinex took hundreds of millions of dollars from the account. Tether is one of the largest players in the commercial paper market, yet no one seems to have heard of them. On July 21, 2021, on CNBC, Stuart Hogner claimed that the New York Attorney General had found issues with their disclosure, but they had updated it within three months. This was untrue. As early as March of 2017, Tether was partially backed by receivables. The disclosure was not updated until the end of February 2019, almost two years later. Even giving Stu the most generous possible interpretation of his words, where he was just discussing the transactions in 2018, it is still longer than three months. They started in the summer of 2018 and again were not disclosed until the end of February 2019. Stuart Hogner was lying. Bitfinex and Tether have myriad red flags and misdeeds that are well documented.